Um, today, we were, we're going to discuss student engagement. And I first want to introduce myself. My name is Pam Dupin Bryant. I know quite a few of you um, have met you over the years. Um, I am an associate professor of management information systems, and I've been at the Tooele Regional Campus for the past 20 years. And I often joke, this is where you say, oh, you don't look like you've been there for 20 years, right, to uh, boost my ego. But um, I've been at the Tooele Regional Campus for 20 years, so I've been teaching IVC, I've been teaching face-to-face -face for that time. Now, many of you that haven't been around for that long probably don't recall, but when I first started in the early 90s, we had an old slow scan system. You remember, Rich? Okay. Anybody remember this? No? So when you guys complain about the new IVC system, then I, my, the, my junior faculty at Tool are always like, oh, here she goes dragging out the war stories. But here's what it was. They would take a picture. So it was two-way audio, right? Yeah, right. Look at it. Show it again. Do it again. I make her hold that pose. Yeah. So they would take a picture every, what, three, five seconds and freeze it. Okay, so if you were caught, like Karen was saying, in the middle of some weird look, that's what scanned up on the screen, right? So we could hear our students, and they obviously could hear us, but there was kind of a delay, right? So when I first started there, the director of the regional campus, Vince Lafferty, and many of you knew Vince, um, a dear friend and mentor of mine, I said, how am I going to do this, right? Like, I can teach face-to-face. -face. I've done it in Logan, and I, I can handle that, but I was just a mess. How am I going to teach with this slow scan and what have you? And his advice to me, and I try and keep it today, is try and make connections with students, whether you can see them or not make the connection with them do what you can to connect um, and there was a other advice that I can't share with you <laughs> in, in, a in a public setting no I'm just kidding but he um, so connecting with students is important and we've come a long way um, so what we're going to do today is um, Elisa asked me to talk about engagement in in face-to-face -face courses in IVC and I thought, well, I could stand up here for 20 minutes and lecture to you, but that wouldn't be very engaging now, right? So what we're going to do today is we're all going to participate, if you would, please. And the things I want to discuss first um, are sort of the, the objectives of our quick 20 minutes together. Are first of all, to define this sort of ambiguous term of student engagement, OK? So what is student engagement? And then highlight the best practices for increasing student engagement in face-to-face -face courses and then in interactive broadcast courses. And we're all going to share those pieces so that we learn from one another. Is the one thing I've learned in these conferences over the last, you know, again, years, is that I can learn from my MIS faculty and other business faculty, but where I really learn is from the nursing, the nursing professors that were here last time, their ideas, and the history professors and what have you. And what I, what I think we're going to find today is these two questions here, the best practices. What I truly believe is that student engagement transcends delivery systems, okay? So if it works in a face-to-face -face setting, it will work, it might need to be modified slightly, but it can work in an IVC setting and it's worth translating or it's worth using in both situations. So first of all, let's just kind of kick this idea around and um, don't be shy. What is student engagement? Any ideas? Oh, and when you speak, if you could share your name and um, your subject matter. Oh, but first of all, let's do this. How many of you are Logan-based faculty? Okay, great, and, and I'm glad that you guys are here. We do this every year, and I'm glad that the Logan faculty are now invited to it. How about USU Eastern? Show of hands. Okay, good. Tooele, represent here. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Nobody from Tooele wants to hear me. They've heard it all, right? Okay, um, how about uh, UNA Basin? All right, and uh, Moab? We have any Moab? Who am I missing? Oh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> She's like, I'm not participating now. Anybody else? Administrators? <laughs> no, okay. All right, so, um, so if you would like to share with me, what, what's student engagement? Just kick it out. I'm going to pick on you. Right. Continuous informed, right? Because it's one thing, we talk about connecting with students, building rapport and so forth, and that's great. But if it's not advancing the goal of the curriculum and informing them. Okay, good. Yeah. Getting students engaged with each other. Oh, nice. Okay, There's good. Right, good. So that, that instructor, but more also the relationships there. How about? So we, I go out and I get the engaged material. Yes. Actively right. Engaging with the right, so see the ambiguous term.
term. It could be engaging with the instructor, engaging with students, engaging with the material, the curriculum, right? So that sort of broad term. We know student engagement when we see it, don't we? We can see when that light bulb goes on, right? But it's hard sometimes to articulate what exactly it means. Any other ideas? Oh, nice. Right, good, good. And not just in the class, but outside that they're, they actually want to go home and do the, the work and put in the extra effort. I mean, isn't it great sometimes when you'll have, we'll have students say, oh, th I know this isn't part of this, but how do you do this? Because I want to add this to my website, Pam. But that's not part of the curriculum, but you know, here's some more resources because they're just really excited. And when they ask you things like, can I do, is it okay if I do that? Well, of course it's okay. It's your learning, right? Of course you can learn outside of my you know, curriculum here. So, um, so let's do this. If you have a sheet of paper, I'd like you to write down or in, you know, put it in your head. Well, first of all, here's some things, some ideas on student engagement. While you're getting out your sheet of paper, sheet of paper, student engagement in a broad sense is the degree of attention, curiosity, interest, optimism, and passion students show when they are learning. The level of motivation to learn and progress in their education. Now, this is sort of this last piece right here is sort of the no-brainer. Why would you even write this, right? So, research and all of our experience, I'm sure, suggests that learning improves when students are inquisitive interested and or inspired, right? Thus engaged. Look at this one. This is sort of a really, <laughs> you have to write that one, but <laughs> yeah, right? It tends to suffer, suffer when students are bored, dispassionate and or disaffected or generally disengaged, right? I know this is like a no blank Sherlock, right? But today with their attention span, right? We find that the disengagement comes very quickly, right? So let's do this. Jot down on a sheet of paper or again, just in your, in your head, um, the one thing that you think you do well, whether it's face-to-face -face or IVC, okay, one thing. Now, I know we have lots of things. It might be an idea, a concept, a method, a technique, an activity, okay, that is the one best practice that you think engages your students. Now, it might be what Nat was saying, like, engages in, inter you know, interacting with you one-on-one, -on -one, and it might, what was your name again? that what Linda was saying, engaging with the content and the curriculum and, and what you teach, okay? So if you could think about that, we're gonna share here in just a moment um, all of those ideas. And again, that's where I feel sort of, um, well, I know that I've learned things over the years from one another, and it's sort of trite, we say it all the time, but we learn from one another more than we do from our you know, colleagues in the Huntsman's, not that you guys can't share in the Huntsman's, <laughs> please share, but we learn from people um, one another, um, and so let's just kind of kick some ideas out. Let me, I'll start, because that's probably a good thing, right? Um, so um, I teach um, a variety of classes in MIS, and I teach an intro to computer programming class. And so occasionally people will be like, that has got to be like the bo most boring topic. But there was an econ professor in here before, so I have to joke, no, that's the marketing is. The, right? No, marketing is actually interesting. So they're like, how, how do you get somebody engaged in, in computer science? I think the thing that I do the best is I, I try to build rapport with students. I think the thing that I, I over time, um, is that I model enthusiasm for my subject matter, even if it is computer programming, okay? Um, about 10 years ago when the mobile hype started up, I was just, I, this is my, shows my nerdiness. It was cool, right? So I was doing all kinds of mobile stuff on my personal, but in the intro class, none of the curriculum for intro classes had anything mobile-based, right? It was still just sort of all boring. The books weren't catching up. The curriculum wasn't there. And I was thinking, well, if it makes me excited to do something with mobile, right, then why can't I teach them programming principles and add a module? I'll make the module up myself, even if it is because I had colleagues say, oh, it's just too, too advanced to do you know, anything mobile back at, you know, at the time. Um, but they're, they had their phones, that's what they were doing, right? And even if it's a little program that taught them how to calculate tips, okay, they loved it. So it was a way, I, I was enthusiastic about it, so why shouldn't I share that with my students? So again, finding ways of, well, it might have been too hard to create that module, but it really did engage them in the process and they learned their programming along the way and now it's just a part of, of the curriculum, okay? So um, who would like to share? And so your name and your content area as well so that we can get a feel for what you teach. Yeah. Um, I'm Beth, I'm in mathematics education. Okay. Um, uh, providing uh, uh, questions that lead to cognitive systems. Oh, nice. So that they're engaging with material and even thinking about it after. Yeah. 
Yeah. So give us an example in math. Um, well, I typically work with elementary uh, math, mm -hmm. uh, elementary and students who have a lot of phobias oh. related to teaching. To teaching. Because they went into LF because they were good at math. Well, they, yeah. Or so they think. Many, most often. Yeah. And um, so, uh, so a lot of question techniques you might ask, you might provide a, a question for them to investigate that open middle where you have lots of strategies to solve, like, uh, you know, Farmer Brown had all these legs yeah. um, in his, his barnyard, and he wanted to know, you know, I can't remember, but he might say 32 legs, and he wants to know how many are chickens and how many are cows. Mm. You know, and investigating that, and there's multiple access points to that, and yeah. algebraic thinking, manipulatives, you know, drawings, that sort of thing, but then um, discussing the strategies <coughs> as opposed to just the Nice. You know, so uh, providing uh, opportunities for them to engage in that top And then the question here needs to be like, how did you think about that? Why do you think that what you said is more accurate than what this person said? You know, and, and really providing them opportunities to discuss things with each other as well. And how did you come upon this? And why I say this is because some of us say, well, I had a, a, a participant in the last session, and he used a Socratic method. And he said, oh, my professors modeled that for me. Mine didn't. <laughs> Mine mo le modeled lectures. Okay. So how did you come upon that? How did you learn this technique? I, I got uh, my master's was in math. Oh. So uh, I did a lot of consulting work with oh. service teachers. Oh, and nice. I taught a lot of uh, adjunct and a lot of background in Virginia. Okay. Nice. Uh, just uh, you know, trying out even discussions with other professors who are in that you know other instructors and yeah. doing a lot of uh, other in service teachers. Right. So did you hear say yeah. trying out? Trying out. How many times do we have to just try something before we, you know, we get there? Because we'll come from a conference like this and go, oh, that's such a great idea. But I'm kind of, I don't know that I get that idea. Read, try out, talk to other people as well. Um, thank you so much. Any other? Yeah. So one of the things. Can I you like, share your name? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Abby Benninghoff. I'm in uh, the School of Veterinary Medicine here okay. at USU. One of the things I really like to do, especially with my veterinary students, is get us on the same level. And so I encourage, I like to encourage challenging questions. So we have this thing called Stump the Professor. Mm -hmm. So I, it's, it's a challenge each lecture. Okay, guys, come up with a question that I'm not able to answer. Yeah. And then we try and figure out the answer together or go through literature and, yeah. and get in depth. So it really does open the floor for everyone to feel comfortable asking you very challenging questions yeah. without feeling like they're going to conf be confrontational or, right. or, or too challenging. Right. Did some of you just go, <laughs> wow, not doing that one, <laughs> right? Because, right, and the thick skin, and I love it, but I could just see that. I could see the tension that we had because it's like, yeah, but what if there's that, you know, uh, student that's just, yeah. My answers, I try and do some deductive reasoning yeah. based on what I know. This is what I think. And I think it was last fall what I thought was completely wrong. And so I know every, so I put that question on the yeah. team. Every student got it right because it, they remembered the experience of stumping professor yeah. and learning from an error. I love it. And I, I think the thing there, too, is that it, it helps you connect with the students as a person, that you're not this, what, sage on the stage, right, the lecture, right, that you're more of a guide on the side is the old term they use in, in distance ed. And, um, yeah, that's fantastic. Brave, 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 right, thick skin. But I think a lot can come from that. And they're passionate about it because there's a, comp a com competitive thing sometimes, too. There's a group of kids that learn through that motivation they want to see if they can stump the professor i like it any ideas yeah yeah so they don't all know each other they don't know how to work together and so one of the things that i've done in the beginning is to give them a physical problem like there's a fifth grade exercise called competition squares okay and those are Lots of geometric shapes. They have to form perfect squares of those. They can't speak. They can't show any sign that they want a piece. But the other students, if they see that another student needs a piece, they can get to it. Oh. And so basically, what I do is set it up and say, this is a fifth grade exercise. So every smarter than a fifth grade. Yeah, nice. And the first group that finishes and gets the squares. I give them gifts to the kids that have dinner at the end. Oh, nice, yeah. 
And so there, there's that. There's also an exercise that Kim Watt and the Education College has used with elementary school teachers mm -hmm. about the scientific method. Yeah. And so I can also use, use that. that. But to give a physical thing just to get the group yeah. engaged and coaching. <laughs> you bet. And, and oftentimes we forget that, the, the, the various activities. And so tell me, somebody, how we could translate this to IVC. You can do this as a demonstration. A demonstration? What? Well, it's tricky sometimes depending on how many students you have each side. Mm -hmm. You have 20 in one side and 82 groups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can turn the mic off and have sites with just one or two who actually work together on the system. Yeah. You have to be a little more creative. And have a plan. IVC because it's, you know, but the same thing, you'd have to send the blocks out ahead of time. Oh. Nice. So it's still physical, right? Okay, nice. Yeah, and the thing there is that sometimes in student engagement um, research is that having that outcome, right, to show that I've done something and not, you know, so the learning outcome to see it, to actually, you know, have that, that piece. So, um, yeah. I would use have no relationship to the content. Or right. It's simply to build relationship. Yeah. Nice. Right. Good. Oh, by the way, I'm Nat. I'm in the environment. Right. Nice. Thanks. Um, I'm Camille Fairborn. I teach at Brigham City in statistics, and I do almost well, all my teachers, all my classes are either online or IBC. And in IBC, I make a little popsicle stick for each student in the class, and I stick them in my coffee mug. With the color upside down, and then I just call on somebody. So pink is for Grand City and Tremont, and so I call on, you know. It's, it's especially hard when you've got people in the class with you, and then you've only got one person in Moab, and you've got 12 people in Logan. And so if you just call on Logan, the same two people answer all the time, and then you call on Moab, the same one person answers all the time, and then this way it goes around. And it's very random, so you know, one they're going to get called on. Well, and Camille, a few years ago, shared this, and I've been, you know, doing a similar method, but t didn't have the cool popsicle sticks, right? And I was like, oh, that seems so, you know, from an elementary ed, right? But you walk in with your popsicle sticks, but it's just so much easier to, you know, manage than me checking off, okay, did I call this per, you know, and what have you, or I always think I have a handle on who I'm calling, but we tend to call on the people that respond to us, even in IVC, the ones that are more engaged, right? So we use their names because we know they'll answer, right? They won't stump me, they will, you know. So yeah, this is fantastic. And when Camille said that, I was like, oh. The semester before I did this with the popsicle stick, I tried to do it with just like randomly writing their name. Yeah. And I still ended up calling on the same thing yeah. all the time. Like it got to be a joke in Logan. They're like, she's gonna call on Kyle. Cause it's, you know, even though you see all the names and you know, well, I know this one's yeah. so not very often, And they're going to next, but I'm going to give them an easy question. And, yeah. and so I can still kind of do that with the six. If I pull somebody yeah. out, I know that they're really going to be uncomfortable asking yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, and it's a fantastic, I, I mean. But then they're still in the Where'd room. you get it from? Uh, Did you? Probably, uh, just and why do I ask that question? Is because sometimes it's just the craziest thing. You're, you know, you have your 10-year-old and you, you're working with them and you're like, oh, you know, I always said my kids, they're the ones that get tested on poor things, right? But it's like, oh, that, if that works in your class, maybe I can share it here. Oh, I'm so, let me go right there. Um, I find in the more I've done this that the best thing I can do to get my students engaged is to stop talking. Ah. And that uh, seems really counterintuitive. Yeah. But when I'm lecturing, that's when, as a class, they're least engaged. Yeah, you bet. And so if I can put the marker in their hand and have them come up to the board, or whether I give them um, inquiry-based guided activities that they work on in groups amongst themselves, that's when they're most engaged. Yeah. And almost always when they're engaged, my mind is closed. Yeah. True? You guys agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah? But that's hard for us because that's what we think we get paid to do, right? That that's our job. But yeah, shut up and let them engage, correct? Jen. Um, there's a, a great way to do that with your students. It's called a Quaker share. And the idea is that you give them a, like a topic or a discussion point or something to talk about. Um, and you give them a guideline that everybody has to share something within this time, but it's not the, and you set them in a circle or an IDC 
see where I'll be the virtually. Um, but then as the professor or the instructor, you don't say anything the whole time. You just let them have the discussion. And of course, if it gets totally off track, you can jump in and kind of bring it back. But it's probably, from, from a teacher standpoint, it's kind of difficult the first time you do it. And you literally have to sit there and just like, yeah. bite your lip. Do you find that too? At the beginning? Yeah. yeah. And just but like we were talking here, over time you get better at that and realize I'm not doing it. What happens with the students and the engagement that they have and what they get out of this conversation and, and take from that. So it's... Ownership yeah, versus... It's a great, yeah. Great nice. But if they're misinforming, you can step in and just... Yeah, it's not like you're going to go get a cup of coffee. coffee. <laughs> Shut yeah, your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> you're the guide, right? You're guiding the... Just jump in and clarify or say to someone, do you guys agree with what they just said? But you don't have to know. And then steer back to do that. But it takes practice, right? And that's something you might not do your whole semester. But again, you may decide, I'm going to do this for one activity, right? We don't have to change our whole course, you know, to, to go to this inquiry based or what have you, but we can say, let's just try, right? We said try, let's try it for one activity and see how it works. And we more than likely will fail a little bit the first time because it just didn't, I didn't do a good job of facilitating or what have you. But if it's important and you think it's important, then move on with it. But if you're like, no, this doesn't fit, right? Then maybe not stick to that. Any other ideas? Yeah. I'm Laura Holy, I'm a different uh, and I teach the uh, future education program. And so what I was wanting to share was what she had with her time depressors. Not popstick, yeah, she's yeah, correcting you. Younger, you can do it. I just heard when you multiply, when you go, when you talk to the success, it's not crafting. Okay, it's not very crafting. Got it? Write it down? All right. that are talking right so whether we use swizzle sticks or you know whatever there's an app we know right I'll have mine create one in our class for it but yeah but good teaching is good teaching at, at any level right and but it's also what we're comfortable with right because if I'm trying if I'm new to the program and I'm not comfortable with people ca carrying colored sticks around because I don't want them to think I'm not professional right um, I would anyway, but th then don't use it. But again, the, the concept is, is there. You want to share? Yeah. number, a random yeah. name generator. Yeah. To call on there. Sure. So, yeah. Just to show them how it works within SPSS. Yeah. Yeah. So other engagement activities that, oh, yeah. Not an engagement activity, exactly. One thing I think is important, I'm from Blanding, Carl Andrews Biology. Um, I teach face-to-face -face with IVC in the mix, so it's like this combo yeah. thing. I try and remember and pretend that they're just in the back corner, just like when I teach 200 students. They're just back there, so you don't forget about them. But I think really important is to engage your facilitators. Yes. If you can communicate ahead of time with your facilitators what you expect, that way the camera will be zoomed in on those kids. Yeah. They will notify you if they're getting up and leaving all the time and you don't see it. You've got to communicate with them as well. That is fantastic because I know every facilitator's name. I, I, I don't know if I mentioned in here, that's a, a goal of mine every semester where they have 60 students in IVC spread across 10 
that's my primary goal is to learn every student's name and I know my facilitator's name and I talk to them when I come on um, and they'll email me and what have you because they make your life a lot easier, right? And um, the, the other thing too is that you mentioned about how it's easy to talk to lecture to the ones right in front of you and make eye contact, right? Well, there's a lot of research on that of making eye contact and, and so looking at the camera Okay, so that they know that you're that that, that you see them. Last semester, they could say switch my computer lab, and the um, the camera didn't work. And I said, well, they can't see me. <laughs> and the um, network administrator goes, it's not really that important, Pam. <laughs> and I was like, yes, it is. They have to see me. And it wasn't because I wanted them to see me. But it was, like I wanted them to see that I can see them. And I often joke about, um, you know, wear the same hat and stay in the same spot. Wear yellow if they wore yellow on the first day so that I know who they are. And don't move around because I want to learn, you know, where you are and who you are. But it, yeah, when he said that, oh, they don't really care if they see you, right? But the, I wanted the camera so I can look into the camera and make eye contact with students. It's hard, right? But those things come from like elementary ed and things like proximity control that you learned, you know, from from um, the L ed teachers that if somebody's talking or what have you, walk closer to them or even just walk closer to them to make a connection with them, right? You don't need to be standing up here craning your neck, pointing at the system. Yeah. Uh, that brings up, uh, a few years ago we got the books into us, what great teachers do. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the thing in that one, um, the, the one thing I remember the most was saying how in a classroom, you need to make contact with every with the students yeah. that come in within the first ninety seconds, the minute, the first minute and a half, yeah. even if it's just eye contact, you know, the way, whatever. And we can do that IBC too. Yeah. Um, but their rates of participation went up like eighty percent. Yeah. Um, versus if you don't, if you sit there yeah. and and, and did you notice she said we can do that in IBC too? But sometimes we're like, ugh, no we can't. Like how am I going to talk to Ken when he's in Logan and we're here? How can I make eye contact with him? Well, I come in early and I, you know, joke with Ken. Like how's, you know, how are things going? And like the stuff you do in your face-to-face -face classes, you can still do, oh, hey, I see you. You know, how's things? Like and when they share stuff with you. Yeah, I mean, you can do that, like in, in, in the IVC, right? But we tend to, you know, to transition between these two, we tend to go, but it's hard. And it's a lot easier just to do it, you know, face to face. So any other ideas to sort of wrap up on? Um, again, the, the engagement with, um, with content, with, with people, start thinking through the, will you share? Yeah. Okay. Um, I teach uh, engineering drafting and design in, in USU Eastern. And I noticed that my students were getting too many, um, I was giving too much information yeah. for, for like neurals and canivores, canvassing and all that information. Look at you, see me glaze over. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they were, were not getting it. Yeah. They were having an issue with it. So we decided, I decided to have them design an object as a class. Uh -huh. And then we went to the machine shop at the college and we built that up. Oh, nice. And they were engaged into it and they finally got what a canvassing does and, and what yeah. is useful and how it's made. So it made a big difference with the students. Yeah. Instead of just talking about it in the book with pictures, they got to see how it's done and how it's a taper machine in, in nice. the real world and stuff. And the students really got into it. Yeah. And they understood it. And the test they did much better. Yeah. And again, that's where you see that light bulb go on, right? That, that they're engaged and, yeah. I was going to share earlier that we should turn to the mind for that. But first, before I share, if you guys have proximity suggestions, more of them, or I would see up on you. Um, but yes, service based. Well, we're, we're teaching as a service. Uh -huh. That makes yeah. that easier to build. But we're, a lot of us are preparing for four careers. that some people are engaged through it's just naturally they want to serve other people are naturally a bit more competitive you know trying to find something that they 
can you know interact with that way but it's engaging the a variety of, um, of learning styles and making sure we hit on all of those so so that we aren't just sitting up there lecturing not that there isn't a, a component to that that piece as well so um, in, in wrapping up I know I had you all think of an idea um, at lunch and just when you're around share with other people and that's the beauty of these types of conference share your best idea with people and try and learn from everyone because no matter how long you've been teaching there's always that well we can hit stagnant right well I do it and that's the way I always have but we hear about different ideas and it may just be a simple thing that sparks one student and makes one student get engaged but if that's you know if that's changing the world or changing a little piece of the world then I think it's a much better um, situation so again the difference between the two IVC if you're ever in a situation where you have to teach IVC and you've never done it or you just you know the thing that you do in a face-to-face -face class can easily be adapted or can be adapted, maybe not easily, into IVC. Don't leave it behind. Um, I often find, uh, it, I, I walk around, I'm a loud mouth, I have you know, enthusiasm. In my IVC course, I sit in a chair right and it was so hard for me so now I'm just a loud mouth in a chair but I still try and show my enthusiasm because that's who, what I am as a teacher that's who I am and that's where I think my connection with students are so if you ever have to go to a different whether it be online um, hybrid or what have you don't leave yourself in the in the face-to-face -face setting try and bring the things that you do well to engage into those different delivery systems thank you all for um, participating today Isn't that all right? I know I, I didn't know really what you wanted.